Nurses podcast with me, Sophia, Big D, and Bruno behind on the camera. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, we just had a math test, so we're not feeling too good. I mean, to be honest, how are we feeling? I don't know how we're feeling. I'm feeling decent. I don't even know. Like, you know those moments where you're so nervous? that you feel calm. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's like when you're like almost freezing to death, yeah, yeah, so you yeah. feel warm. That's how I felt yeah. the entirety of today. Yeah. My leg was bouncing like crazy. <laughs> I was so scared, but like, I don't know, all these things like don't even matter, like yeah. at the end of the day. So like, you just need to like. Whatever, bro. Yeah. It's the first test, so it doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, we'll just, we'll see how it goes. We've it been just... saying that for the past like yeah, five exactly. years. Like, oh, this like, is... I don't know, like, I, since it's just the first test, and since we've only just started, after you finish a test, like there's nothing you can do about it. There's yeah. no point in thinking and stressing about it and letting it like, like eat your brain out. There's no point. There's a so. saying in Spanish, or I don't know if it's a saying, but my dad says it. It's it's adios mariposa, which means like bye butterfly. And like it's basically whenever something happens that you can't control, you just think of it as like a bye. butterfly fly, flying away, yeah. and you say like bye. But on on a, on a real note, like in. Um, in uh, Stephen Covey's The Seven, I think that's his name, I'm not sure, but The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, that guy says that there's a circle of influence and that there's the circle of reality, I guess. Yeah. And in the circle of influence, those are the things that you can impact. The circle of reality is just stuff that you can't impact. And the only thing that you can do after you finish the math test, the only thing that you can change is your approach to how you feel about it. Like, yeah. you either let the fact that you did badly or you think you did badly on a bath test, you either let it like like ruin your mood or you don't. But it's up to you. Like, I mean, that, that can be said with so many things in life. Like, there's been so many things out of our control recently. Like, yeah. I'm not going to go into to specifics, obviously, but I think we can all think of things that, you know, yeah. that sucked, but, yeah. but we can't do anything about them. Yeah. And then instead of letting them like prey on your mind, I guess you need to learn how to like let things go. But yeah. that's such a difficult thing to do or to yeah. learn. It is. It is. Because like, yeah, I don't know. It's, you feel like by thinking of something, you can kind of manifest your desired outcome into being, which in a way is kind of true. Yeah. But also if something is really out of your control, <laughs> like a bell going yeah, exactly. <laughs> then uh, solid then um, you know you just have to accept it but you shouldn't let it like affect you so much like you yeah because sh- you can't do anything about it so like by the way complete tangent today is national coming out day oh international I'm pretty sure I'm not sure <laughs> but I think I'm pretty sure my mentor told me so for those of you who came out today good on you Congratulations. Congrats. 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 So, David's just confirmed that it is not today, but in fact tomorrow. So, for all of you that are preparing to come out today, then tomorrow, then I wish you uh, the greatest of luck. Uh, but back to the point, right? Um, <laughs> the, I think the circle of influence is just a really, really cool topic. And I think people need to recognize it. Like, most people just think, like, yeah, you know, like, I, don't, I can't really impact the way that I see things, you know? Mm-hmm. And as much as it does make sense, like people that say, I can control my emotions, I find that to be slightly ridiculous. But I mean, to some degree you can, right? You can approach, you can control your approach to dealing with things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can, yeah. you can control your approach to dealing with things. So if you, if something bad happens, you can either take it as a positive and take it as a winning streak because <laughs> yeah. that's what that's what this guy called Charlie Rocket says. He, see, he always says winning streak. He's on a winning streak. So if something mm-hmm. bad happens, then his philosophy is that the universe is conspiring with him. And since something bad has happened, it needs to balance out. So something good is gonna happen sometime soon. And as much as that does sound like delusional, <laughs> as much it's... as it does, it's always good. Because if you're in a good mindset, good things will manifest. If you're just as if you're in a bad mindset, bad things will manifest. That's why I hate listening to sound music. Yeah, I get what you mean. Do you, that's actually a really interesting point. Do you think that even if you're delusional in, in what you believe in, so let's say this is um, a mindset, so believing that the universe has your back or a religion or, or whatever, do you think that even if it's maybe not 100% true or not proven or whatever, that can help you stay positive? Well, I mean, I think if we just take the example of religion, so many people have found faith and solace in religion that they, they, that it helps sort of alleviate the misery of their lives, right? Like, mm-hmm. if you're a guy that just lives in, like, you know, like, absolute poverty, so you're, 
you live in absolute poverty. I'm not going to put a country on it or a yeah, continent because yeah. I'm. Um, but anyways, you live in absolute poverty and you don't have any love in your life and you're like 50 and you're a guy or a girl or whatever. Um, you're working a nine to five or maybe you're not even working a nine to five. You're working at a farm. Mm-hmm. Um, something that will bring you a lot of comfort and a lot of solace is that you you are like by having faith in God and by having faith in religion and the afterlife and all of those things, you sort of that hope brings you comfort. And if, if in the absence of that hope, you'd be in much more despair. And if we think about it, right, like what is the, the goal of life? Most people say the goal of life is, you know, like everyone has their own subjective interpretation yeah. of what the goal is li- of life is. But I think there's a, there's a relatively common consensus that it's happiness, right? Mm-hmm. And so if religion or whatever delusion you have makes you happy and isn't harming someone else, then it's fine. Like then you're just achieving happiness while believing in something that might not be true. And that's why so many people like debate against religion, right? And I mean, I understand why you, you debate against religion because religion obviously has multitudinous um, reprimands and it has consequences and it's been detrimental in very many ways. I mean, mm-hmm. it's polarized the people, but it's also united the people. So you have Christians, like the Crusades, Christians and Muslims, they, they fight because they think they, you know, like Jerusalem belongs to us, Jerusalem, whatever. Um, that's not supposed to be racist or, or religionist in any way. <laughs> but anyways, that, that happens. So you can see it as polarized. But then what you can also see it as is that a billion people in the world have the same faith, share the same faith, are part of the same community mm-hmm. of knowers, of believers. And so you feel like you belong to a community. Mm-hmm. So that's the positive in it. Like there's, there's, there's some positive, there's so much good in religion, despite how it's portrayed in the media and despite how it's just portrayed generally. And that's why I think saying like, oh, religion has plagued society and you know, like the communists bad at religion and everything. I think that's ridiculous because I think so many people that are, that have such misery in their lives. Yeah such misery like they live miserable lives they miss they live such mundane and and dull lives Mm -hmm. the one thing that can bring them some level of faith is something like religion Mm -hmm. and that positivity will manifest other positive things in your life as well Mm -hmm. because i mean from what i see from what i've experienced in my life when i'm good when i'm in like a good like happy positive mindset i can achieve so much more yeah than when i'm in a bad mindset yeah so optimism for me is just like the greater than the crocodile, the inequality uh, mm-hmm. of, um, of, of of pessimism. I think that it's it's so, and it, I think it's so demoted. I, I don't know if you have this or, or if David or Bruno have this. When you come up with an idea and you like the idea and you're like, oh, this is a sick idea, but it's a very ambitious idea. And then you tell someone else and they're like, oh, that's not really realistic. Yeah, oh, yeah. I hate that. It adds no value because exactly. they have no involvement in it anyways. Exactly. But doesn't it mean that you can actually be realistic about your goals? No, because I think that, like, r- what's realistic is so, like, toned down because of the, the systems that were placed in, yeah. like, school and, and whatever. But I think that everyone is capable of so much more than, like, exactly. you, can, you can think of right now. So, uh, to comment on what you said about religion, I think it's, it's so difficult to... Um, from our perspective to see that people really need hope to, to keep going like day yeah. to day because you know we're, we're in such a privileged position but um, I guess my question is you know these people are believing in something that they don't know is true mm-hmm. they're just kind of like you know that that's kind of what religion is you kind of have to blindly have faith in something because a large community of people have that faith and in a way that's that that's really uniting but at the same time what if you know you come to this realization one day that you're living your whole life following rules that have been supposedly you know like set by by some divine uh, some divine being yeah. which maybe stop you from doing all the things you want to do yeah. and then like y- you realize that you know why am i doing this like i don't actually know if when i that's, die that's, or when i pass away it's yeah. actually going to have any impact and then maybe you're making yourself unhappier even if it's giving you hope i don't know that's a really good point but i think that when you have faith 
Mm-hmm. I think faith is the key element here. When you have faith, you don't question whether it's making you sadder. And when you have faith, like you seek faith when you're in, when you're in like a, 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 a profoundly depressing and melancholic and dull life. You mm-hmm. seek faith. I mean, I don't know, obviously, because I've never experienced anything near that, but I can conceive what it would be like. Mm-hmm. And I feel as though having faith in that situation where you dedicate yourself, where you feel that sense of belonging and all of that, you won't contemplate whether it's actually limiting you. Yeah. Because you're, you don't know you don't know what happiness is like you don't no, that's not entirely correct but you don't understand like the magnitude of happiness that you can achieve because mm-hmm. your entire life you've lived a relatively sad and and, and dull and mundane life mm-hmm. but this is only with the the hypothesis or like the the, the assumption yeah the assumption that this person lives in a, in absolute poverty or yeah whatever, and with no family he's an orphan and he grew up an orphan or something all, all the bad things yeah, yeah yeah exactly but if you think of it as that then they won't contemplate they won't think like oh but religion is limiting me because religion is the only thing that they have like, yeah true it's the only thing that they can belong to mm-hmm. and it's the only thing that they can believe in i mean the fear of the fear of death is is literally the the foundation of uh, the foundation of ancient philosophy Mm -hmm. it started by contemplating what happens you know contemplating the existence of the existence in itself and then and then what happens after we die the Mm -hmm. afterlife is a very big concept and and that like people find solace in knowing that there there could be something after Mm -hmm. there they find comfort and when you live a really like a, a so many bad words that I can use right now. But if you if you're living a sad life, mm-hmm. then you're not you want like you want to have that element of comfort. You want to have that element of all oh, you know later on, it's gonna be fine. And I think. But yeah, go on. for me, because I've never been a person of of faith. faith. But I feel like for me, if I was, then that would mean I would focus more on what what happens to me when I'm dead than my time alive, which is guaranteed. You know, it's not guaranteed to it's not guaranteed to anyone that when they die they're going to go to heaven as much as the the religion kind of like tells you. It's not ever guaranteed. No, I, I, even 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 people who 100% believe that there is a heaven or a hell, it's never guaranteed that you're going to heaven. You you might go to hell, you might go to the middle ground, whatever that's called. Like I, but for those people, for but, those people they perceive it as guaranteed. Yeah, right. But so I'm saying like even if it wasn't even so if it isn't 100 percent guaranteed how can you be focusing on on you know i want my life to be perfect when i'm dead in heaven rather than i want my life to be perfect now i don't think that people have faith think i want my life to be perfect after after i pass away i think they just think like there is something to look forward to or, or there's, but that looking forward to isn't that like there's a goal above or there's something that's looking over me or this is happening for a reason because when you're in such a profoundly like dull life you can't like even even if even if like because as you said religion might limit you you might think like oh it's fine i'm gonna live like a later on in my life i'm gonna be fine mm-hmm. but that's not what i'm saying religion doesn't limit you I, I think that religion doesn't limit you that way i think that when you're when you trust and you have faith in a religion then it help it empowers you it mm-hmm. gives you hope and it empowers you to believe in yourself and also believe in everything mm-hmm. and so believe in obviously like the divine and everything that's what i mean when yeah. i say everything but having that hope and that hope in their like subsequently resulting in some level of self-confidence mm-hmm. knowing that god is looking over you that that idea whether i believe it or not or whether you believe it or not that will empower people Mm -hmm. that will empower people and then obviously we're going to get into the question of um how do people's perspectives on uh, a religious scripture or content within religion influence the influence of religion on them Mm -hmm. right because it depends on your own like your perspective on the information or the content of of religion depends Mm -hmm. i mean it depends on how you've grown up it depends on how your perspective as a human has been shaped and your own way of interpreting things. But regardless, I think a, a truth that permeates across all people is that religion can give hope. So, okay, let me pose a hypothetical. Imagine we're living in a community where everything is 
miserable, you know? Like, the weather's always gray, everyone's always hungry, um, you know, just a, a, a dystopia as, as bad as you can think of, right? Mm -hmm. And imagine I am the ruler or someone who has control, and I pose this, I, I promise everyone, if you keep pushing through and if you just make it through to the end of your day, every day until you naturally pass away, then you will, once you are gone, have something to look forward to. How ethical is that? Without knowing, ma yeah. maybe I even believe it in myself, but how ethical is it to give that promise to people? Well, I mean, that's, I, I see, I see what you mean, right? Because it's unethical because you can't promise them that if you know that it's, if, if you're not certain that it's true or not, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, l let's assume that it's not an ethical question. Let's take ethics out of it for a second and then we'll okay. bring it back later. Um, you saying that to the people will give them hope to continue being virtuous, to continue having hope in themselves and to continue pursuing things in their own life. Mm -hmm. The only thing that it limits is them doing depraved and reprehensible things to get their way. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that it's limiting, right? Mm -hmm. Like by saying do good things and when you die, it's going to be good. The only thing that you're limiting is them doing bad things. That's the only thing that you're preventing. Not necessarily. I'm also limiting them. I mean, I'm maybe before that people would have contemplated like committing suicide or, or whatever, just or I don't know, maybe they would have tried harder to get out of that suffering. Yeah. But wouldn't they try harder to get out of that suffering if they knew that there was, if they, if they had faith in themselves, they knew that there was a God looking over that would eventually do something? Like if you read this... But the, the, yeah, go on. The, I feel like there's never the promise that God is, is going to make your life good. It's, it's that God works in mysterious ways, right? And there's never the promise that he's going to put you into a better place until you die. But no, but in, in religious scriptures, mm -hmm. in the Quran or in the Bible or in the um, Torah, mm -hmm. the common theme mm -hmm. is that God is looking over you, God is within you, God is everywhere, and God will help you. So mm -hmm. that, that's the common theme. Now, with regards to whether God works in mysterious ways and, and, and all of that, then sure. But the idea, or, or at least my conjecture on the idea is that they're promoting this idea that God will help you. God is there, mm -hmm. or at least that's what it is in the Quran. I'm not but sure about the other ones. And in the present. Mm -hmm. So for me, in the past, I'm not as religious anymore. I'd say I'm a little more spiritual. Mm -hmm. But for me in the past, like I have like been in my bed and I feel like complete, you know, right? Because um, <laughs> I can't say it. Um, I'm, I'm just sitting there and I'm like, what am I going to do? Mm. And I feel so hopeless and I feel like I can't control it. And instead of, instead of like trying to change the way, trying to fight with my head, I just surrender myself and I say, God help me. But I, I don't like, when I do that, that act of saying, God help me, that act of complete impotence gives you, you, you surrender the outcome mm -hmm. to God. And so you assume that things are going to be good. And, by and then that manifests that things, it? Yeah, and then that, that mindset of the assumption of things being good always eventually manifests. Or at least that's my experience. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's shared with many believers. And then there's obviously the problem of people misinterpreting texts, yeah. um, justifying it for, for terrorism. I think that's ridiculous. Those people do not, they're, by the book, they do not count as, as like, they're not Muslim. Mm -hmm. by, by the book. Or and, any other religion. Or any other religion. Yeah, but I, I mean, like, the like Al-Qaeda, all of the individuals that participated in that, mm -hmm. by the book, are not Muslims. Mm -hmm. By the book. And so you have all of these different interpretations, and I think that's the danger that we run into. But, but that's really interesting. But I think, like, going back to the hypothetical, I feel like I wouldn't have been able, if I was in that, that, in that world and someone promised me, maybe, that, maybe it's usually just me, but I feel like if someone promised me, like, just get through this, and then when you die you'll go to like a really lovely place. I feel like I wouldn't strive to like make my life better while I'm alive. I just look forward to when I'm dead. But that's, that's, I think there's a, there's a, you're misconstruing the idea by thinking that 
the promise of religion is only a promise of the afterlife because it's not it's mm-hmm. a promise of everything permeating mm-hmm. across everything so there is a promise within the Quran at least mm-hmm. that God will help you in your current life mm-hmm. so let's take that hypothetical situation that you mentioned and let's transpose the idea of God will help you in your current life yeah so if you're here right you're here mm-hmm. and you so the guy like some guy is the leader and the leader is someone that all of the people believe mm-hmm. right and the leader says keep going and I will help you mm-hmm. and you ask for help from the leader and the leader says I will help you mm-hmm. regardless of whether the leader helps you or not will your mindset not be pronated to doing better I mean yeah Wouldn't you, because your mindset is more positive you're like oh it's okay if he's gonna help me then it's gonna be good mm-hmm. you can either get lazy and be like yeah, I'm not gonna do anything but it's very much outlined in in the Quran at least that if that God will only guide you he won't Like, you won't do it for you. You mm-hmm. need to do it for yourself. Okay. But things will manifest for you to be able to do it. Yeah. So that whole positive mindset of it will eventually be good, mm-hmm. that will make you, that will lead you to to performing better. That will lead you to the positive outcome. And mm-hmm. regardless of whether religion is good or bad, mm-hmm. in terms of this particular regard, regardless of whether, not, not good or bad, regardless of whether it's true or not, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, having faith, will positively influence the person that has faith mm-hmm. if they have faith within the guidelines of the books that are pr- promoted. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I think, I mean, it's very iffy whether religion overall has a positive or negative impact because yeah. I think there, it's very difficult to quantify. Yeah. But for me, at least, I think it has a very, very... I'd like to only... I mean, I perceive both sides, but mm-hmm. I prefer... perceiving the positive side obviously because mm-hmm. I think it's it's had such a tremendously positive impact on my life and that was only in the beginning and mm-hmm. I mean I'm still 16 so it's not the beginning of my life. <laughs> um, but yeah yeah but I think the analogy I wanted to go back to the um, realism versus pessimism uh-huh. uh, p- pessimism versus um, optimism mm-hmm. I think that you could take I want I want to just propose an analogy mm-hmm. so what what is being realistic? Being realistic is following what other following what the objective like common consensus is on what you can and what you can't achieve. Yeah. So the realistic path, mm-hmm. let's assume you have two paths. The realistic path is to do well in school in high school, uh, get a higher education, so go to uni. Mm-hmm. Once you're done with uni, get a job. That's that's the realistic path. Like yeah. being realistic, that's what you do. Unrealistic is where all of the insanely successful people are mm-hmm. um, dropping out of Harvard to make Facebook, for example, or starting Amazon in your garage or starting Apple in your garage. All of these things are things that weren't realistic. They're, mm-hmm. they're delusionally optimistic. They're not, they're, the, the consequences are far, far, far greater and pe- society perceives it as far more probable than the reward. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I think we always run into. Because when yeah. you feel alone, mm-hmm. or when you feel like you're the only person that believes it, you don't want to do it. Because you can only verify whether your belief or your knowledge is true by going to other people. Yeah, that's right? so true. But when you really believe in something, like I've had this with hypnosis, <laughs> when you really believe in something, mm-hmm. then regardless of how many people tell you that it's not going to work, or that it needs to be less ambitious, or that blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. If you really dedicate your time and you make sure that your mindset is stuck on it, you will achieve it if you yeah. just work hard enough. And yeah. I, that's been the case so many times. Every, yeah, so every time I propose an idea, it's like really, really small, right? And maybe this is something I need to work on and probably what a lot of people need to work on. But I feel like if my if the reactions aren't initially like, whoa, that's such a good idea. Like, whoa, that's so you cool. Feel like- You feel, you feel like, whoa, wait, like, maybe this just maybe isn't something, yeah, maybe that, may, yeah, exactly, maybe it wasn't that good of an idea, like, maybe this isn't something I should dedicate right. my time to. But the thing is, people don't know what it, like, that's the thing, like, even when I explain an idea to you, yeah, you, the, what you understand from the idea that I communicate is between how I communicate my idea mm-hmm. and how you interpret my idea, yeah. how you interpret what I communicated. Mm-hmm. Right, and there's so many layers, so of, many bias, layers of bias, so many layers of the, just what I explain yeah. is probably not what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. So, 
you saying, oh, that doesn't sound like a nice idea, that can be on a completely other idea to the idea that I have. Yeah. Because in my brain, it's gone through so many filters of you needing to find the correct words, exactly. me needing to understand the words, me needing to process exactly. the words the meaning, visually in my brain. And the meaning that you attribute to words are yeah. ever so slightly different to the meaning that I attribute to. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the idea that I propose to you is not the same idea that, that your understanding of that idea mm -hmm. is not the idea that I have. Mm -hmm. Not exactly. And to align visions... That's something that just confuses the, the, the hell out of me. I just don't get it. Yeah. Like, but but you but know. You know, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't get when visions are aligned, but you know when they're aligned. Yeah. Like when I explained Hernosis to David over the phone, the, like this was in like early September. Mm -hmm. it, it was w when it first came to my mind. Um, and I started developing it a little. I called David and I'm like, bro, I have this sick idea. I want to do this. I was inspired by a good friend of mine for the name. Uh, this is sick. I want to do it. And I explained it and it seemed, it seemed like, David, tell them what it seemed like, bro. I don't know. <laughs> it seemed a bit off. It like, seemed a bit off. But regardless of the fact that, it's, that it seemed a bit off, David recognized my passion for it. David recognized that I was like excited about it. And you recognize that it could have potential. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, it, did. it yeah. sounded like it had potential. But yeah. So like something different. Yeah. So as opposed to David just saying, uh, that could use a little work. He said, bro, it sounds like a sick idea. Uh, get me on it as soon as, as you have it started. Mm -hmm. I mean, like even with like, with us, I've known you for so, for like yeah. five years, six years, I think seven, seven years, yeah. seven years. Yeah. And I, you know, there's been so many times where you have an idea or I have an idea, usually you, <laughs> <laughs> and you pitch it to me. Sometimes I have no idea what you're talking about, yeah. right? But just because I know, like, you know people and you know their dedication to things. And just because I know you, I'm like, that sounds sick, go. Like, how can I help, you know? Yeah. Same thing with Enosis. Same thing with, like, you know, just like these projects. everything. Sometimes they don't, like, pull through. Yeah. Sometimes they do. And, like, when they do, it's so satisfying. It's so, because yeah. you believed in, in it from the start and you saw it grow from, like, a tiny yeah. little bud into, from like, baby. such, yeah, like... Exactly. And yeah it's, it's your baby yeah. it's so cool yeah and it's so nice to have people involved in that and it's so nice to like make people adopt my baby basically. yeah like, <laughs> like hypothetically like that ass like, that's basically what's happening and it's so nice because then you see everyone sort of getting involved and you see people sharing your vision and like the things that's, that have made me really happy in the past like two months yeah is when i was working on henosis <laughs> henosis <Sorry, laughs> um and I finished and I finished up like four hours of work on it and I was like happy as hell and I was like oh, I'm done and I go off and three days later so this is when I introduced ClickUp which is a little mm -hmm. platform that we use for, for <laughs> you hate it okay the people behind the camera don't like this <laughs> but anyways we use ClickUp right and people when they want to start the project and when they want to like outline what we need to do for the projects we use ClickUp and we put it on the calendar and <laughs> Like three days after I did my first, like when I grinded for four hours, I, yeah. I, I, I like fall asleep. Three days later, I check the ClickUp and I see that people have started putting on their own tasks on ClickUp. Yeah. And they're like adopting it and they're doing their own work. Yeah, go on, David. Okay, so with one of these projects, right, you don't necessarily, there's no set timeline for when you accomplish something when you haven't. True. Yeah. So how does that feel? Because after four hours of work, you still always realize that, you know, you haven't really gotten that far yet so you know you have to build to something how, how does that feel when you when you finish like four hours of work and you realize ah well i haven't done anything bro i don't know for me i see like i don't know i have this thing man where where like for instance when i spent four hours of work like writing a document outline for an event despite the fact that it's just a document outline mm -hmm. I still see the thing happening bro like i see like the event happening i, I see like the burger sounds at uh, the football tournament and the people with the music and everything, bro, I see it. And so even if like there was no outcome to writing the document, I'm so gassed about making it and mm. I'm so gassed about it happening that when I'm done with it, I realize like, oh, this is one step closer to the vision that I have yeah. and to the vision that we share. And yeah, I just, I, yeah. Yeah, I think that's my weakness. Whenever I have a project like, like this that I want to start, like I get maybe one or two weeks into it and after that, I'm like, you know, there's no deadline, like, so, so I never actually end up, like, w like, 
pushing myself to like work on it because like usually I do my best work when when I can see what's ahead. Yeah. And with this, you don't see what's ahead. You need to yeah. you need to, you need make, to it make it yourself. Yeah, make it yourself yeah. enough faith in it. Yeah. Maybe and that's something. Faith. Maybe that's something yeah. I'm missing. Faith. <laughs> <laughs> but but on a real note, like I think when your vision and whether this is true or not, once again, I'm just going to bring it to the table. The idea of visualizing things, mm -hmm. the idea of really thinking about them. It, many spiritual people have said that visualizing things and envisioning them always leads to manifesting them. If you just like within like some yeah. framework or whatever, but visualizing and seeing things always leads to them. And it's always good. Mm -hmm. Like the fact of the matter is it's good. Mm -hmm. So when you see something that's good, it's good. Like, when I see, when I see, like, where her nose, her nose is going to end up, end up yeah. in, like, the, the student, like, lounge, not at Ish, obviously, but in The Hague, mm -hmm. where people can come, where people can study, where, you know, like, this is only one of the ideas, but when I see all of these different things, it makes me excited, yeah. and I feel like there's something to work towards, and the thing is, at school, we're always grinding, like, I've been grinding for school, I, I, I like yeah. academic work, and I love learning, but I feel like all of those skills aren't put to use sometimes like what am i like what really pisses me off is when i'm writing like a, a physics lab report and i'm done with the physics lab report and that's it and i'm like okay yeah so and, and you've learned so much interesting stuff but like yeah it's, but it's, you can't apply it like, yeah. you're not applying anything and so all of that stuff that we've learned like i feel like all of these years have been apprentice years right now we're going into the world like mm -hmm. now we're going into it yeah, and now exactly. we can use all these things that we learn and all these skills and my our, our understanding of everyone's skills and weaknesses we mm -hmm. can bring them together and make something big and, and yeah. real and but i i feel not. like it's completely up to us <laughs> yeah i feel 100%. like people are still going through their apprenticeship right now yeah. and and some people are really entering the world entering the corporate world entering yeah. the the world of like connections yeah. And it's completely up to you when you start that. Yeah, and I think that when you when you start it, you recognize that your reality, and I don't want to sound cliche here, but your your reality is just what you make of it. Yeah. Like us, like hypnosis wouldn't have existed. It would be normal. Mm -hmm. It would be completely ordinary if hypnosis didn't exist, and we'd be pursuing our regular academic lives now and doing our thing. Mm -hmm. But because Someone brought an idea to a table because we got together and we're like, we're doing this. Now we have, we dedicate our time to it. Now, now it's part of our life. Like yeah. for me, it's part of my life. Like I think about this a, a lot every day yeah. and that's good. But that's, that couldn't have happened if you didn't decide that it's happening. Yeah. So it's all up to you. Once you get into that, like it's, it's that freedom. Like we have the freedom to make what we want and mm -hmm. we have such an advantage. Mm -hmm. We have the biggest advantage to be at ish and in this community and having all of these people like Bruno and, and David and everyone, literally everyone that's part of the Hypnosis team and people that aren't even part of Hypnosis. Like the potential is insane. Yeah. It's crazy. People are so yeah. good at And the atmosphere and, and exactly. everything. We have everything. We have everything within our grasp. We just need to clutch it. We need to yeah. take it. We need to go for it, you know? And that's what I find so... That's what I find so empowering mm -hmm. in our year, specifically in year 12. That's what I find so empowering because mm -hmm. we have so many personalities that for me personally, there are people that I see that I look at and I'm like, damn, like bro, that guy's doing well. Yeah. And I, I, I feel motivated and, and by, by admiring that part of them, I feel motivated and I'm like, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pursue something like that. And since we have such good positive characters and since we have such like unique people mm -hmm. that bring such interesting things to the table together we form an insane community yeah so for anyone listening that has any cool ideas or anything related to anything we've said or any any little bit of inspiration that maybe was popped up in you Contact Hinosis. Yeah, just go for it, bro. Like, Start a project, go for it. Exactly. Tell us, tell Skander, yeah. tell the Hinosis team. Yeah, maybe not Skander. <laughs> 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 the camera team is roasting. <laughs> no, but on, on, on a real note though, make your own reality. Like don't don't let like all of these these weird thoughts in your brain that are telling you nah it's not possible and no, this don't, is not realistic. Don't let it stop you from making something. Don't let 
the way you've done in school, the system of school itself, any of that determine what your success what what your success is going to look like and what your reality is going to look like because that is 100% what you can imagine anything you can yeah. imagine yeah. can be brought to yeah. life you just work for it and it comes to life that's the thing a okay. couple of continuity differences later <laughs> yeah, so anyways so, uh, to wrap up this was a bit of an interesting well hopefully interesting <laughs> like about a little bit um, but this was a cool structure i think we talk about religion uh pessimism and realism and then we concluded with pursuing your ideas and pursuing yeah. your dreams and making your own reality so for real on a real note if you guys have any ideas any, any questions, questions about anything we've said any yeah. comments anything you want to talk about in future episodes yeah then, then bring it up and if you want to come on then you can also propose it uh, but you have to have your own topic and everything. Um, and if you want to recommend any teachers that you'd like to get on the show, uh, then that's definitely uh, something we'd love to think about. Exactly. So, so thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Follow Bye. Up on this show. <laughs> <laughs>